Right, you're on with me, Andy P. You've got me until six this evening. Now, uh, this next artist, Eden Langerfeld, right, is a young, talented singer-songwriter who draws her inspiration from brilliant artists like Tracy Chapman, uh, Nora Jones, or her very own uh, Zimbabwean homegirl, Rosala, a.k.a. Rosala Miller, um, who's a brilliant artist, isn't she? Uh, she started singing at the age of eight, and she started writing songs since she was 10 years old. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's, uh, her imagination is extremely vivid, and she loves telling stories through many different art forms. Eden has actually been telling uh, BBC Radio Leicester's Kevin and Kube that she's a fan of my show. Well, thank you very much, Eden. She's also a fan of the Foxes. Yeah, so I became a fan of the NDP's show through social media, and I just got to know more about BBC Leicester through, like, the internet and the soccer team and everything. So you support Leicester City? Um, I'm actually a Man United fan, but I think I have my eye on Leicester City, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sound pretty young. When did you sink your teeth into music? When did you start your musical journey and why? I started writing songs when I was a really young kid, probably like eight years old. And um, they were just like really basic, you know, silly songs about like my dolls and um, my dogs and my brothers at home. But then I started to take it seriously, like, in my high school years. And I, I saw that I actually could turn my songs into, like, actual um, pieces of music that people could enjoy and relate to. So, yeah, that's kind of when it started. Eden Langevelt is the name, but Eden Lang is the stage name. Are stage names important? Yeah. I think it's important, especially when you have, like, a tin litter name like mine like Langerfeld and when people can't pronounce it it's really important to just like make it you know palatable for people yeah there's also like a double consonant at the end and people always mess that up so it's just like cut that out <laughs> absolutely how do you pronounce this double consonant now you the daughter of a famous comedian tell me more so my dad is Edgar Langerfeld and he's a political satire comedian like he he started out in 1999, like, doing shows about Zim Zimbabwe politics. Kind of got really famous, and he was even nominated for awards, and he won awards and stuff. Being exposed to the performance and, like, the entertainment industry, I think mostly through my dad. It's in your genes. It's like, yeah, it's kind of in my genes. You know, I couldn't escape it, even if I wanted to. <laughs> your drawing and painting. Well, I think for me, like... I try to tell stories as much as possible through like any art form. When I do like have something on my heart or like something that's bothering me, it does help me to like tell my story through a painting or a drawing and just like capture it. Because I feel like it's like a, a snapshot of my soul. So in a sense, it's a snapshot does, like, of your really soul. Me. I like that. Yeah. Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston. Jennifer Hudson, these are just of a few of the greats who started off singing in church, just like you. Your biography says mm -hmm. you started in the church. What do you think it is about starting out in the spirit? Well, they do say, like, music is the language of the soul. So I think there is something to do with going to church and, like, coming into terms of the spiritual world and, like, your inner life and inner workings that releases something inside of you. So you started singing yeah. at around eight years old? I did, yeah. What have some of your challenges been? Stumbling blocks, your struggles? Well, I'm actually an introvert, which is like one of the biggest struggles that I've had. Where I, I feel like I recharge a lot in my, uh, in my solitude and like when I'm alone. And one of the hardest things was like getting, getting up in front of people and performing or, like, reading out my songs and, like, poetry and stuff like that. It was, like, really hard for me because it was something so personal for me and something that I did in my bedroom and even just, like, posting videos on YouTube. It kind of took me a very long time before I could do that. The way I overcame it was just, like, I don't know, it was just, like, this inner feeling inside that these songs had some meaning and they could actually, like, you know, impact other people's lives. And then I just said, you know, it's like something I just have to overcome and Absolutely. Get over. Introvert. Uh, I'm an 
introvert, extrovert. Is that, is that a new phrase to you? Because I think they exist. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an introvert. You're an ambivert. Oh, I didn't know oh, that phrase. So cool. Ambivert. I only know like three ambiverts. <laughs> oh, so I'm the fourth one, you know. Yes, you're the fourth one. Wow. So you mentioned YouTubing. In Africa, do you think YouTubers are the future globally? I don't know about Africa because not many people have internet here. But I do think that in my generation, definitely like YouTube and all social media has the potential to like really reach a lot of people. And YouTube and like all the social media platforms can really help artists like me like get out there and people to have a voice, you know, in the world. Okay, so who is your hero and why? I really look up to artists like um, Nora Jones, Tracy Chapman, and even Rosetta Miller, who's like a local artist. And I just really like how they, you know, stay true th- to themselves and they, yeah, they never like steer away from their, their identity as musicians. Yes, actually she does. And also because she's Zimbabwean and I actually went to church with her son. So that was kind of cool too. So it was like, oh, I know you type thing. Rosella Miller. Oh, it's a small world. Yeah, it is a small world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm Eden Lang and this is my song, I'll Be There. When you're crippled by anxiety and fear When the people all around you disappear When the enemy's the only voice you hear I'll be there When your patience and your strength is wearing thin And the only light you have is burning dim When the only option you see is to give in I'll be there I'm the voice in the storm Can you hear me? I'm the fire burning warm Can you feel me? You don't have to see me To believe me I'll be there I'll be there
beautiful. That was I'll Be There by Eden Lang. Now, Eden is a mixed race folk singer in Africa. She's toured extensively, but feels Afro beats uh, is dominating the charts. So Kevin and Kube asked her if there is space for her genre in her motherland. Actually, no. But I really do think that there's a huge market for it because we do see like one type of genre taking, you know, taking up space. Like you mentioned Afrobeats. I really do think that artists like myself need to stop putting their stuff out there, especially in Africa, because there's so much talent that's hidden and there's so much like different variety in African music that's not being heard. So I really do think that there's a huge gap in the market for it. Just heard your song, I'll Be There. What inspired you to write that song? One of the things that is a challenge in my life is anxiety. Like I mentioned, I'm an introvert, but I also have social anxiety and things like that. When I wrote the song, I was kind of writing it from the perspective of God or like a higher power just saying, I'll be there. Yeah, that's kind of where the inspiration of the whole song came from. I'm going to ask you some fun questions. These are some sure. <laughs> fun, light-hearted questions. If you weren't a singer, you'd be? I would be a vet. A vet? Love animals? <laughs> Yes, I love animals, but I, I'm so terrible at science. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Before you walk into a recording session, what do you do? Um, I actually jump around and like run around and just like get my bu- my blood pumping. <laughs> a favorite yeah. show you performed at or a show you created is? My favorite show is it's kind of simple. It's my first paying show um, at the Wild Geese Lodge here in Harare. And I was so nervous, but it went, like, so well. And it's, it holds a special place in my heart. Was that because it was your first pay show? Yeah, it was, like, my first pay show. <laughs> she Yay! loves the money. She I loves the money. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're yeah. the daughter of Raquel Welsh. Oh, so my mom is actually a bookkeeper. Like, ah. by profession, she does finance and accounting. Well, you've just been in South Africa. uh, Let the cat out of the bag. What was happening there? Oh, um, so I went to Cape Town just for some recording sessions with a friend of mine who's also a musician. And I did an open mic at House of Machines. And that was such a joy. It was so nice. So now singing and gigging during COVID-19, how has that been? In one word, I would say interesting. (laughs) Um, because at first I thought I would really hate it, like being stuck at home. But I actually got so many more opportunities to collab with artists that I don't think I would have been able to collab with if you know if everything was normal. So it was kind of bittersweet. So this would be the Information Network Superhighway. You'd be thanking uh, having connections online. For sure. Like so many new connections and collaborations opened up just because of being on lockdown. The best thing about what you do as a singer is? I get to have fun. The, the first thing you do when you wake up is? I'm going to be boring and say, check my phone. And the last thing at night? <laughs> check my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Three people you'd love to have lunch with? Ooh. Um, do they have to be living or dead? Either or. I would say Jimi Hendrix, Diana Ross, and Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Whoa! What's the that dream? Would be an interesting lunch. <laughs> that would be an interesting lunch, girlfriend. What's the dream? What's your next step in music? I'm actually working on my first debut album, and I hope to be releasing it next year, early next year, like around March. And hopefully, that will open some like opportunities for more collaborations and gigs with local artists here as well. So, what's your mantra? What's your favorite quote? The jack of all trades, master of none, is oftentimes better than the master of one. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so what are your socials? You can find me on all the streaming platforms. That's iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music. Um, it's just Eden Lang. And on social media, it's Eden Lang Music. And I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter, Facebook. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much Oh, YouTube as well, of course. 
So there's BBC's Kevin and Kube in conversation with Zimbabwean singer and songwriter Eden Lang. Check out Eden Lang music on social media. And here is Eden's latest track. This is Glitter. Myself kneeling to pray, can't find the words to say. Pictures from my past erode my peace of mind. Feel like I can never leave mistakes behind. Now I can see that the lessons learned, addiction I was burned. Still, I check the mirror only in review. Always seem to know better than what I think I know. And I know that you know everything. You always seem to know better than you always seem to know better than. So I let it go. his plans, knowing that the future's not inside his hands. Our glasses were never meant to be looked through. I know that you know everything, you always seem to know better than what I think I know, yeah. I know that you know song beautiful voice yeah really nice uh, eden lang music on social media uh, that was glitter before that earlier on you heard her tune i'll be there uh, by the way get your songs in for the final track of the day we're going for a halloween theme so uh, if you want your track chosen you know send it in 81 travel 3 uh, you've got this one song and then i'm going to decide we've got some great choices um and one is really pipping the post at the moment so you know but you, you never know. Send in yours because yours might be might be a little bit better. You never know. It is it is Julie. <laughs> 